artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence and machine learning to enable uh, the different use cases related to uh, AI and data science. So just a question from uh, you guys. Uh, what does it mean when someone say artificial intelligence? What does it mean? Please, uh, like uh, someone open his mic and, and share his thoughts. What does it mean when we say artificial intelligence? I think to make a computer think like a human. So your voice is breaking. I'm saying to make computer think like humans. Okay. The powerful artificial intelligence machine learning based software that is used to control the machine. Think like humans. Anyone else? The powerful software that is used to control the machine. Control the machines. Anyone else? Decision making powers. The scene making power. The ability of a computer program or a machine to think and learn. That okay. is artificial. Okay. So, <laughs> so what what have we say say that artificial intelligence is a domain where we do let's put here's a machine where we try to induce intelligence through data if i write here then 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 can we say it like ai is a domain where we try to induce artificial intelligence using data now now what if if, if you map it to to the you can say that uh, to the video which we have just shown, uh, saw if i say here then how it it was like uh, how data was being fitted these were the pictures from the webcam right how it was inducing it it, it was inducing inducing intelligence that this picture is for the drinking and this picture is for not drinking right so so the the domain ai is all about inducing intelligence through data to your machine so that so that you can automate something like as it has shown you that it has built a simple app for giving you alarm that you haven't like built uh, like uh, you can say that uh, drink the water since long, long, long time right so any questions so far hello no okay. uh, so when we talk about ai then we comes across different terms um, um, across the like internet and other things first one is machine learning then we talk about deep learning Then we talk about reinforcement learning. Then we talk about data science. 
so uh, again like a uh, question from all of the attendees that what's the difference between all of these hello anyone hello anyone like uh, would like to contribute uh, i would say that machine learning we, through machine learning we train the model uh, and uh, actually we give the features that we want and in deep learning computer automatically learn from features and the reinforcement learning is like uh, we like uh, train a pet whenever he performs good we give him a reward and whenever he performs bad we shout it at at him and data science is uh, i think some part of machine learning some part of data or deep learning and some part of business okay okay got it so <clears throat> whenever you people will come across uh, you can see the that uh, for example these will the terms you will be looking after on the internet whenever you will try to learn about artificial intelligence first one is machine learning then deep learning reinforcement learning and then uh, you can say uh, data science right so first of all let me tell you like uh, the, uh, highlighted by the person that it's like features and uh, other things so as of now the example which we sh we, we saw here was an example of deep learning right where we what we did we we took raw pictures we labeled it like drinking and undrinking and train the model right and all of the features are you can say that rules to identify when a person will be be drinking water and when a person will not be drinking water these rules were generated by him uh, self and even for example when a person has uh, his uh, hand in air when he is drinking water every sort of data extraction from the raw images was being done behind the game without zero involvement right then uh, there is another domain like reinforcement learning as of now the simplest example comes to my mind is the self driving car right or you can say that for example uh, where just like humans that for example human learns from the, its experience right when we talking about artificial intelligence then there's a there's a concept of static learning and there's a concept of ever evolving learning humans works on the basis of ever evolving uh, learnings but machines usually have a static learning behavior for example if you have seen that when it the, when the model was making wrong decisions then then the person the the person who was training the computer he has to intervene and he has to tell to machine that this decision was wrong this decision was right so so please readjust your rules please readjust your learning so that you can make better prediction next time so it's like always improvement always intervention to ask your machine to to do the things right so 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 now let's move forward and again let's draw in another other image and and cover these things so if i draw image here then ai is a bigger field like where we try to artificial intelligence induce the things then the first domain which comes in this arena is machine learning then the next next thing in the row is uh deep learning then there is reinforcement learning if i if i further draw an image and i say that this area is all about automation the complete picture but it also include like if else or what if type learnings that are you can see that 
manual rules generation that for example if you have to teach someone you can give him notes you can give him let's suppose rules to take a decision and based on those static rules it will always keep on taking on decisions and it will start uh, like uh, make final prediction but as soon as we will move towards this direction right here is like like more closer to human brain this is how things are evolving or you can say that when we talk about artificial intelligence then what's the difference between all of these right so still one turn left but uh, uh, i would request you guys to 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 contribute that how i can place data science in this cycle any idea hello data science is basically science of data so i think machine learning uh, data science takes some part from the machine learning then from the uh, ai uh, okay got it got it so what if i draw here another cycle uh, like box and i will like write it in green and i will say it as a as a as a data science ds means data science right so data science is a domain we, 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 which is uh, you can see that uh, motivated or got ambish, uh, motivation from ai field or all of the ai fields which are li listen here but it it comes from a business perspective and more important the data which we are we are getting from day on day operations of business right so sir can you repeat it please how you okay. can relate uh, artificial intelligence with the data science sir okay. we did not get over here that what did you say okay okay so let me like redraw the thing Are you clear as of now the the the, the black circle oh, sorry black box where we have defined the term AI? AI? Yes, sir. AI is uh, clear actually. But uh, what okay. my question was that how you relate uh, data science with okay. artificial intelligence? Okay, okay, okay. So so now let's like move toward data science. That yeah. data science is an overlapping field between AI and data uh, uh, engineering, or you can say that a field where we have to also think about that from where we have to get the data how we have to store the data how we have to access the data and then once the data is there then how we can use ai ml deep learning or reinforcement learning algorithms to solve our day on day problems right for example maybe some some organization is facing an issue that their sales are, are declining right and they have a point of sales system installed then how okay. they can use uh, how they can extract the data from those uh, point of sale system, how they can transform it so that they can feed it to any of the AI algorithm and then can make some predictions. For example, this customer will visit my store again in next week and this customer will not visit my store again. Okay. Right? Right. 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 So, so from AI side, it's only picking algorithms, but okay. the data handling side, side, right, for example, to, to make, as I told you that uh, for example, to for artificial intelligence is all about inducing artificial, uh, all about inducing intelligence to the machine. And for inducing the intelligence to the machine, you need data. How you can capture this data, how you can store this data, how you can access this data. This is coming from here. We call this as data engineering. Data engineering. Okay. Right. Right. So, sir, and, is it also a branch of data warehouse? Uh, you cannot say but but ultimately when you talk about uh, source of data then source of data can be anything it can be raw file it can be a simple database it can be data warehouse right right so you can say it like this that here's data warehouse mm -hmm. then on top of it data scientists will be working okay got it sir. gotcha 
and these data scientists will be using AI skill sets plus some of the data engineering. Let me draw it again in a bigger way. Like here is data. It can be files. It can be database. <coughs> it can be internet. It can be data warehouse. Right. Here the data scientist will be sitting where they will be using a skill set, some few of the portion from AI and few of the portion from data engineering. Right? Right. Okay. Sir. So now let's move forward. As as like we have seen a small uh, glimpse of uh, Microsoft, uh, sorry, low update AI. This was purely like trying to address a problem from deep learning where we are giving him a raw images and the raw images were uh, and then further we were labeling it and based on these labels it was like uh, learning the rules and then it was making predictions right but here if I draw another line and I say that let's suppose um, I'm running an e-commerce store. It holds a DB where data is structured like in a particular format and then I have to build a model which can predict that for example which product customer will buy. Right. So the difference between deep learning or the, the process which we have seen through lob versus uh, you can see that a process from uh, the e-commerce store where, where business is involved and data is stored in a different format. Then what we'll do, we will first, for example, do feature engineering. We will now see a dem demo of feature engineering and then we will build the model. Right. So now let's see, like see a, a demo of uh, uh, Naim. Here I will I will show you a picture of Naim. That uh, here is one of the tools which we have explored. Then there is another other tool where we have to explore is is Naim, right? So let me like open uh, Naim at my end. Can you people see my screen? Yes, sir, it's visible. Yes, we can. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Uh, sir, I question to ask a question. Please, uh, like, I have a question uh, to ask. Yes, yes, please. I have a question to ask a question. मैंने एड में क्या कहते हैं वैका के ऊपर भी काम किया हुआ है कुछ थोड़ा बहुत मुझे ऑरेंज का भी आईडिया है एक दो टूल जैसे मैटलैब है उसका भी आईडिया है मैं अभी करंटली एक एग्जाम एग्जामिनेशन की जॉब कर रहा हूं एक यूनिवर्सिटी के अंदर तो मैं अपना कैरियर स्विच करना चाहता हूं तो उसके सिलसिले में कोई मुझे हेल्प मिल सकती है मैंने डाइस ऑफिशियल पे मैसेज भी किया था जो ग्रुप है कि अगर मैं यहां से कोई कोर्स कर लेता हूं जैसे डेटा साइंस फॉर नॉन टकी है कि प्रोग्रामिंग स्किल अभी मेरी ठीक नहीं है लेकिन इनिशियल थोड़ी सी है कि मैंने डाइस से ही जो 3 वीक्स का इसका पाइथन का कोर्स था वो मैंने किया हुआ है तो अगर मैं वो कोई ऐसी जगह पे जॉब करना चाह रहा हूं कि जो जहां पे ये जो है क्या कहते हैं ज्यादा कोडिंग स्किल्स रिक्वायर्ड ना हो कि डेटा की जैसे प्री प्रोसेसिंग है या एक्सेल की वर्किंग है तो वहां पे लेकिन वो मैंने कहा था कि अगर मुझे कोई प्लेसमेंट मिल जाती है या कोई इस तरह का ऑप्शन मिल जाता है तो मैं वो करना चाह रहा था लेकिन वो उस तरह का कोई जवाब मुझे नहीं मिला वहां से मेरा ये क्वेश्चन ओके ओके इमरान थैंक्स फॉर योर क्वेश्चन आई होप आई विल रिक्वेस्ट कि अगर हम इफ वी कैन आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन एट द एंड ऑफ द सेशन एंड दिस विल बी लाइक आई विल एड्रेस इट आई विल रिटर्न इट ऑन द अदर स्क्रीन एंड आई आई विल एड्रेस इट थॉरली राइट 
Okay, uh, I have also one question, please, sir. Yes, please. Uh, you you draw a picture in the last uh, session, and uh, uh, you you write uh, machine learning AI, then uh, machine learning, then deep learning. So I want to know how we can say that uh, a machine deep learning is a part of uh, machine learning. So I I have a little confusion in it because deep learning uh, uh, methods are totally different, model techniques and and uh, you know uh, the rules are different. Uh, feature engineering is different than the machine learning. So uh, I have little confusion in it, and there is a part, sub part of machine learning, deep learning. So can you explain it? Okay. So uh, just give me a second. Like, like, let me uh, open the nine, and they will also like right after uh, opening the nine, I will like address your question. Thank you very much. Thank you. We we are just like waiting for the flow. Uh, unexpectedly, my nine is getting stuck. It's taking some time. But let's like uh, let's answer it. Uh, meanwhile, I guess it will open itself. Okay. The difference, if 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 I like how we 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 collaborated uh, the things between deep learning and machine learning, right? Yes. What is the line where we can differentiate? This is this is a problem is related to machine learning, or this problem is related to deep learning. As by my understanding, uh, image problem or uh, uh, the video related problem is related most related to the deep learning, and the um, uh, calculation or some numerical problem type is called the machine learning problem. As by my uh, high level understanding, <laughs> but uh, I cannot such. Got it. Got it. So first of all, let's see that 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 when we talk about AI and we refer to these both two terms, ML and deep learning, right? So yes. So so we always like data is something which is common here. Here we will be data. We will be working on data. Here we will be working on data, right? Second thing is is like the the nature of algorithms which we will be using. Right. So in ML side, we mostly refer to probability base, or you can say that statistics or pure statistics oriented algorithm. Okay. And here in deep learning, we talk about neural networks. Right? Do you think like yes. like when when you see when you like visually see an image and uh, your brain will be making some calculation behind it? How it will be making a decision that, for example. Uh, it's a window in front it's of me. It's a cat or dog. Mm. Yeah, it's a cat or dog. Mm. Right. So, so in yes. neural network is, is is more like mimicking human brain, where human actually abstracting, or you can say that abstract the information from raw data, and then take a decision. right but when we will be working on probability or statistics we have to to extract features by ourselves right when we talk about extracting the features in ourselves then for example there are there are thousand of customers which are visiting my store right in database let's suppose i'm just waiting for the the name to open it just got stuck somewhere yes it's open now right so just like uh, continuing with the, your question if you can see on my screen i have a data which is in this format you can see here that it's a visit date when a customer will visit my store and then how much revenue it's spending on my store right and there yes. are 1.05 million rows which i have extracted it right okay if if i will feed this this data directly to to my uh, ml algorithms then those algorithms wouldn't work or those algorithms wouldn't learn it on on their own that how they can make a prediction that this customer particular customer will visit my store next week and this customer will not visit my store next week you mean uh, right. feature will not automatically extracted from the data yes 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 so if if you see here different nodes we will also like take a deep dive into nine in last 30 minutes but to just to give you a flow and in a comparison with the nine 
I have transformed my data in a shape. Here you can see that previously there were three columns and now there are 186 columns, right? And for every customer, I have built different features or different columns. For example, if I see here, then this is the 17th of a month. How many rupees he has spent on, on my store on 17th of month? Then so on, I have built so many features in this, this data set. I have transformed my data set in a way that where I have different information for different customers. For example, here is a column where I, I have calculated that how many times a customer has visited my store. For example, this customer has visited my store 14 times. This customer has totally spent a, a PKR of 1900 rupees on my store and then so on. Right. And then at the last column, I have created labels that from historic data, which of my customer uh, churn means a customer haven't visited my score again and not churn, he has visited my store again. So if you compare it, then these are the images which we were giving to the lob. But uh, difference in this and the lob was that, for example, where we were directly uh, giving him the feature, uh, sorry, draw images and rest of the calculation, for example, how he should identify or, or you can see that how a glass in hand can be described through pixels. It was being extracted by him, uh, by the software itself. But here we have transformed data in a way that that tool will work on these features and will come up the result. And here's the label. You can see that with you can match it with the drinking and not drinking stuff, right? So once this data is available, we call this as feature engineering. If, if you see here, then I, I have uh, like in yellow box, it's feature engineering part B2. Now at the next thing, I have placed a model and now based on statistics and based on the numbers, this is the thing where like it has come up with an idea that out of all the provided variables, if a customer will have uh, last month visits greater than 3.5, if I, he has visited my store greater than three times, then most probably he is not going to churn. Like green cycle means that in this rule, customers are more pro, uh, prone towards visiting my store again and there is a very less probability that they will uh, like switch off their store and they will visit another store. Here, if, if the customer have made very few visits, then you can see here that uh, the customer will most probably churn and he will not visit my store again, right? So, so now if we compare this insight, like, like when we are working on machine learning, first thing was building features. Then using a statistics or probability oriented uh, tool, uh, sorry, algorithm is a decision tree, which is purely a probability oriented. Uh, you can say that uh, algorithm and then based on algorithm, we also got some insights. You can see here that we can, we have found a lot of pro, uh, statistics rules, which we can use down the road. For example, loyalty days is, is a feature which I've developed in my data set that if a customer will, will visit my store with less than 3.5 of gap then most probably he will churn. If a customer will visit me with a bigger gap, then most probably he will not churn, right? So these are the rule or these are the insights. In deep learning side, you will not get these insights. That will be like a black box. Hello. Yes. Okay. So, so, so do you, so when we talk about black box, do you think that you can decode your, your, your decision of that? For example, if this is a window and can you decode it like, uh, like this, that my, my eye has, eyes have seen that, uh, uh, it's a, it's a square box. Then for example, it's, a uh, uh, you can say that there, there is a glass, then there is a bar. Like, do you think that your, your mind would have taken sight to scene behind the scene, just like these rules? Hello. Yes. Right. Do you think that it will be, it would have been making these things like this way? No. So, so, so first start with Mohammed Asif that how do you think that it's a no and another previous question, then I will give mic to you and you will explain that why it's, it's yes. Because I think uh, the visual data is not that much uh, describable as uh, numeric data is. 
that's what i thought okay okay and, and what about the yes answer the person who gave yes um my answer was yes because i think our brain is uh, may, uh, detecting some patterns behind the scene okay so now let's now let's like first difference between ml here is that it sits here you will you will like uh, get rules or you can see that you can explain the decision that why a decision was taking that this is window but in deep learning these things are like black box right then based on those black box what is doing was that rather than such a describable patterns getting or our numbers crunching getting in deep learning it detects detects patterns for example if we, it will look at the image then it will see that how many pixels are there in this image then so on then it will treat every pixel as a feature and then based on the combinations of those features it will identify that whenever there will be a picture which has for example you can see here that a shape a shape like this then it means it's a box then then it will detect for example there is a glass then it will say that for example for glass i'm 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 getting value of pixel like this and then based on those this information it will take a final decision that it's a window the person which uh, the, the the person who said yes the more or less these insight will be generating but these generate are not interpretable are not easily explainable to end user just like the way these are representable to us like here in in conventional machine learning that these three rules are self descriptive they are they are humanly readable and anything is is purely picture perfect and and it's being associated with the number but here in deep learning it will be all about signal if i say here that for example it will be working like this that for example here is a picture and there are there are let's suppose 9 uh, 6 pixels it will make a layer of nine oh, sorry there are six pixels it will place everything here then these we call them as neurons then these neurons will pass signals to next neuron then these signals will be passed to another layer of neurons then these signals will be passed to another layer of neurons and then here will be the final decision excuse me sir yes please so you are talking about the layers the... yes 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 okay okay right so these layers are nothing more than output in the form of one or zero or signal but in machine learning everything is you can say that flow is there but the rules are well descriptive like uh, month one visit counts then loyalty days and then this, then for example uh, total purchases are other thing and the question which was previously from where the discussion was started that why like we keep ml and data science ai then machine learning and then deep learning is there because deep learnings like major or you can say that foundation are driven from basic of machine learning are ultimately these things track back to the statistics like for example these signals which are being passed from one layer to another layer were purely an output of a statistical rule but those statistical rule, rules were not clear as like we we get uh, clear statistical rules in ml but the basics are same that's the statistics and the statistics related to to you can see that ml like for example if a person who is working on on deep learning he has to understand what is the life cycle of a machine uh, like uh, model building what is the life cycle of uh, you can see that retraining a model what is the life cycle of uh, redeployment of a model so everything is being borrowed from basically from this concept so as when we go towards reinforcement learning 
then most of the concept will be like partially concept will be coming here then again this is how things are connected but the main difference is that here when you will write your node rule then things will be more descriptive more descriptive but not scalable like for example can you write the rules uh, that uh, how um, how my brain identify a window or how all of the human brains on on earth identify the windows manually it will take years right but if you will try to 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 solve it through here then it's it's less descriptive. basically uh, we have the idea in the mind like about the shape uh, and uh, we can, we can just recognize that this is a window that because we know from our childhood and this is uh, and other things uh, we 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 can say it's our experience based we were uh, can say from our experience that this is window this is we cannot yeah, make the rules got it got it but 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 somehow your your mind has has a learning in its uh, like stored the learning behind identifying a window in its uh, in its wires or you can say that in its neuron that through which you are again like you can easily identify the window in front of you right or a door or a car or anything else right so yes so th th there's here's the confusion that uh, uh, here we just uh, have the in uh, neurons and we have working on the neurons behind that and the, in the machine learning there's a working of uh, statistics working and uh, you know this is a proper uh, sciences involved so uh, uh, my point is that these are two different uh, sciences not the um, uh, deep learning is a part of uh, machine learning this is confusion that, that's why i, I raised this question before okay but that, that like, like to move forward i will just say that why we are talking about like machine learning conventional algorithms of machine learning uh, or you can say that it's a bigger bigger domain where we try to 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 learn something or try to find hidden patterns from the data in conventional machine learning we we rely on probabilities and in advanced machine learning or in modern machine learning we we try to build neural networks so they, they like as of now just to move forward i will just like uh, uh, sure no problem try, try, right so so moving forward here's a gl just glimpse of uh, you can see here that glimpse of uh, nine where we have built up predictive models without writing a single line of code then if we compare it to the log then there are different like in conventional machine learning there are different validation methods for example here's one of the uh, validation method which is like known as confusion matrix You can see here the output that that for example this model is predicting 73 percent of the time my result accurately that if it says that more that, that this customer will not visit me back uh, or will churn then this that customer will actually makes a churn and if it says that it this customer will not churn it will not churn and this accuracy ratio is 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 going towards a 73 percent of the number right so now let's again watch a small video and then we will build up the discussion towards uh, like uh, you can see um, towards uh, no code machine learning or an era of automated machine learning and then we will we will like as an example i've shown you that here's a workflow a detailed workflow just for your reference then we will build a simple predictive model in nine in in just like fraction of minutes or in a fraction of you can say that not more than five to ten minutes so let's like uh, watch a video and then we will come again Here's another tool like so far I have exposed you to the log, I have exposed you to the 9. Now let's like uh, have a look on another tool uh, where you can see that just by clicking few clicks and just making some configuration, you can find the hidden patterns or the hidden rules within the data. Hi, I'm Ingo Miesvang, the founder of RapidMino. Can, can you uh, hear the sound? Yes, yes. audible. Today, I would like to introduce a more productive way of building great data science solutions. We call this Rapid Miner Auto Model. It accelerates everything data scientists do when building machine learning models. 
With a couple of clicks, you can load data and select your modeling task. Here we have customer data from a telco. The data columns describe things like the length of calls or some contract details. Our goal is to build a machine learning model which predicts the churn risk for all clients. You can further specify your goals by mapping the possible outcomes to new values. The heuristics in RapidMiner Auto Model have already guessed that you are probably more concerned about the churn class. Therefore, yes was pre-selected as the class of interest. Auto Model further speeds up data preparation by analyzing your data to identify common problems. Columns with lots of missing values, which resemble an ID, or which are too stable, are highlighted and can be removed with a single click. Finally, AutoModel accelerates modeling by suggesting the best machine learning techniques. It automatically generates optimized and correctly cross-validated models from your data. So, let's move on to the results. We start by analyzing which features have the greatest impact on churn. International calls and the amount of calls during the day are among the most influential attributes here. How well do our models perform? We can easily compare the performance of the selected models. Deep learning has been running a little bit longer, but it also delivered accurate predictions. Each model provides built-in model visualizations specific to the model. And you can even explore the models with an interactive simulator. You can see how the models perform in real time and why predictions are made. You can try out different inputs or even optimize them automatically to find out how your most loyal customers would look like. Let's see how much our champion, deep learning, can help with our churn problem. The lift chart shows that we could address 70% of our churn cases by reaching out to only 20% of our client base. This model will deliver positive results very quickly. You will get predictions for your client base where you don't know the outcome yet. The predictions include visual explanations as well. This is extremely helpful for complex models like ensembles or neural networks. It is important to know that AutoModel was not just building a single model of each type, but it was optimizing the most important modeling parameters in the background. And best of all, there are no black boxes. AutoModel generates a rapid minor studio process behind the scenes, so you can fine-tune, test, and quickly deploy the model into production. Using the built-in best practices and its logical approach, AutoModel reduces weeks of data science work to a couple of minutes. So I'm truly excited about this new functionality, and I hope you will like it as much as I do. So, so this was a glimpse of another tool, like uh, where you can see that there was not a single line of code involved just to build build the machine learning model, right? Everything was just like you you should be aware of the complete life cycle of data science. Then you should be aware of the like reading the outputs and then about uh, like uh, should have a background about different uh, configurations in every algorithm, and ultimately you will get the results, right? So 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 if you see that in any of the example there was no Python required, there was no R required, right? Even it was a AI core deep learning problem, core like images and videos related problem solving, we just solve it through single click. Then again, like here's a rep, uh, nine, I've shown you that for example, there was no coding involved and the everything was there. Then here in rapid miners, same thing is, 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 is uh, like you can clearly see that coding. Sorry. There's no coding involved, right? So. Now let's move towards the like simple uh, demo again from nine. I will refer to nine again. Let's for example, first, first lock a problem statement on which I will be giving the demo. Then I will build the things from scratch. Like I will be using a telecom. I will be using a telecom data set if I show you here. Just give me a second, please. Or we can like I would prefer if we can jump to 
the catcher prediction that will be more interesting example to solve right for example let's suppose i'm 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 i'm, I'm looking after hr for company and i have an issue that a lot of people are, are are leaving me right so this is the issue and and i do not have like you can say that uh, data science skill set uh, I'm sorry, Python or coding skill set, but yet I want to like manage my uh, resignation of employees so that very few people leave my organization. It can be only done if I, I can get a signal well beforehand that a person will place his resignation in, in next six months, right? So that I can have a three to four month of window to convince him, to, to motivate him, to, to reward him so that he will stay with our organization for a longer term, right? So this is the problem let's suppose I'm facing. So, so let's suppose here if I see that, uh, for example, there are two things, either it can be a reactive approach, either it can be a proactive approach. Then there is a problem statement, for example, uh, what's the, just to, to highlight it. The purpose is that, for example, if it's, it's like uh, eight month here, let's suppose it's, if I look at here, let's suppose in eight months, it's, it's August 2021. And I want that within a one year, how I can control my churn here that, for example, if it's a reactive approach, but then down the road, more and more employees will be leaving me. It's, it's like uh, the churn rate is increasing day by day by month by month. But the green line is that if somehow I can build a churn prediction model, right, where I can predict before time that these employees will leave me in next six months in a one year so that I can I can onboard them, I can motivate them. So that they can stay with me uh, with a longer time. So that down the road, my H and churn should start to decline, or the number of resignations, resignations with respect to my complete company should start to decline. So this is the objective. So for this, like we use predictive modeling, and and predictive modeling is like uh, building. You what you can see is that based on historical data, we we train a predictive algorithm, then we build a model or rule. Then we will get the latest data. We will give to new model, just like you can see here that when in a log, it was training the data based on historic data. It was providing it the labels that this is drinking picture. This is not drinking picture. And then there was an example of, uh, you can see uh, that uh, providing the data, like in the form of pictures, the, the drinking picture and the not drinking picture. We gave it to an algorithm and then it came up the rules that how it can identify any picture with uh, a glass in hand or drinking in water or whatever sort of uh, prediction we want to make. Then if you can see that through webcams, he feed it to the model, the new pictures, and it started to give you the, the prediction. So same life cycle is being followed here as well. That on historical data, we will train the algorithm, then we will get the result, then we will uh, feed back, uh, feed the new data set to, uh, uh, to my model, and I will start get, getting the prediction about my employees. So this is just like another glimpse of data science life cycle, that where we are trying to, to address the things. But the, let's move towards the core core thing that, for example, here's the data. I have 35 features in my data set where we can see that ID is there, age is there, his business travel is there, daily rate is there, department is there, then everything is there for all of the employees who have left me in, in less for last month. And then what was their, their profile? What was their, for example, how much salary they were getting, how many leaves they, they uh, you can say that, uh, have availed where they are positioned in which department they are positioned how many days have been passed for his promotion like all of the features which we can use to describe an employee employee history before putting his resignation on the table this data is about his historic data then we have a flag that this employee turned this employee not turned right then there is another glimpse of the the same data in the form of rows for example there is an employee who has uh, like uh, age of 41 years id is one he travels yearly rarely Daily rate is 1102. Uh, he's from sales department. Distance from home is one kilometer. Education is, is two, like for example, it's master degree, then education field, and then so on. We have all of the features which we, we can have about uh, our employees. If we move forward, then this is something which we can build in nine. Of course, like due to time li limitations, we will not take a deep dive, but this is something which we, these are the graph which we can really build in nine for uh, our own analysis. Then we move forward, let's build a decision tree, our, our apply algorithm, and let's try to solve that, for example, how I can figure out that which of a particular column, or, or for example, 
how a person is making a decision to 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 uh, you can say that to 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 put a resign or to leave a particular company so i am just going going here file new it's a new nine workflow let me write it like imply attrition here's the example so i can place different nodes from here in nine for example i have to read first the data i will place a file reader node then i will placing a decision tree learner here then i will be predicting i will be placing a predictor here then i will be placing a scorer node here right i can connect these node easily like this like this like this like this right now i will start configuring them first i have to configure them that where is my data let me go to the window and select the data there just give me a second i'm just like finding the file from a laptop is data i'm just like seeing the past data is employee data and i i can just like set different things here like for example i'm writing it like this the data has been imported into my data set i will just click execute it then my data has been imported into nine i just missed another thing let me place one to two more nodes here joiner is like com con uh, combining two data sources here i pick the data employee data like this file is containing all of the all of the data about an employee that for example what does it mean uh, sorry what what's the history of an employee before putting a resignation on table then there is a data that which of my employees have joined me sorry have left me then there is attribution level i will execute it my data has been imported now i want to combine both uh, data sets i will place a condition that for example join the data based on id here it is been executed now i have a combined data where i can see that employee number 1 these are its statistics and then there is a attribution value that he actually left me this employee with following attributes didn't left me right now i will go to uh, my next algorithm selection i will select that i want to read the relationship between attribution column and rest of the employee attribute i will just click it execute and open views here is the all of the information rules like a model has been trained that is saying me that if a customer has a if if a employee has a yes time over time and it's is marked as yes then chances are there that that for example then there is higher probability that he will put a resignation in next 6 months if i go further then if his monthly income is you can say that less than 2500 rupees or usd dollars then there are 70% chances that he will leave you if i go further then if his daily rate is even smaller yeah but why can see, see here that you are pushing an employee to to go for overtime then you have kept him as under uh, low income category his daily rate is small or lower then if i explore it further 
and his education rate is for example if, if he's from life cycle then there is 100 percent chances that he will leave you in next six months then so on right so all of the rules like how you can find a relationship between a person decision to 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 put a resignation on the table is there in this hidden the cg then here's a prediction like based on what is has been learned i have just like going to predict make new predictions And then I am going to check that how accurately it has like learned the things. You can see here that this model has been trained with an accuracy of ninety-seven percent, right? So just a question from you before moving and 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 giving you, of course, like it's a webinar, so we have to like consolidate the concept or we have to give the concept the confidence that, for example, uh, doing machine learning or doing data science. Uh, for example, uh, if, if there was a myth that or you have a, conce a concept in mind, a perception in mind that you can only do it through Python and R, then that's not the, now the case. Now in market, a lot of open source tools exist, which are in th themselves so much powerful and so much uh, in rich in terms of feature that you can build data science or you can say that conventional machine learning models, conventional data science machine learning models are deep learning models without writing a single line of code, right? Here's one of the example. If you can see, see here, if I had a data, I just, this was just like, I was like taking you, you people on board as well. If I would have been uh, doing it without like telling you guys, then th this would have been done within like, it would not have taken more than five minutes. Right? So just a question from you guys that while I was replicating a uh, building a simple prediction model that whether an employee will make a, uh, will resign or will not resign, have we written a single line of code? Yes or no? No. Second question is, was it difficult? No, not at all. Right. The only thing you need to learn is life cycle, right? When you want to now coming back to a question, which we previously part was Imran Malik. So, so Imran Malik, the, the, when, when we are searching for the data science, maybe Python and R is not the, like you can say that the, the way forward, the only way forward to enter into the domain, right? You need a tool which can help you to translate your data or apply algorithm on your other data. But the main value out of a data scientist is that how he can help their organization or their employees that they can use that how they can use data science and what will be the data science life cycle of a data science model within an organization to solve a particular problem. So, so you can start your journey if you are trying to, to enter into data science domain, then you can start with this, uh, like drag and drop tools. Like so that you can first clear yourself with respect to data science life cycle that what is data science, what is predictive modeling, what is supervised learning and blah, blah, all of the technical jargons, which are associated to a machine learning domain <clears throat> and try to learn them through a drag and drop tool like Nime, like rapid miner. And then as a next step, if you still think that you want, you can go for Python and R then like go to Py learning of the Python and R because if you will place learning of Python and R at the second place, then your learning journey will become too easy. Like most of the times when a person from non-technical background is moving towards the, the data science, the, the main issue, the main mistake, which most of the people make is they, they try to learn Python and data science or machine learning in one go, which makes their learning, learning journey too complex. So, so, so the, my recommendation is that if you can divide your, uh, learning per journey into two steps, first learn about data science life cycle using a drag, drag and drop tool, and then jump to Python and R, then definitely like this journey will be really helpful for you. And of course there are jobs in market, which, which are now available in market, which instead of Python and R, they, they, you can see that they ask that, uh, Python and R is must, but there are jobs where, where it's not necessary as well. Right? Is it clear, Imran Malik? Yes, thank you. Right. So it's all about like, like learning data science is not about like uh, uh, learning Python. Rather, it's more important about learning data science life cycle, which I usually recommend that data science life cycle can be best learned through a drag and drop tool rather than a machine learning, rather than Python and R. We are not denying the power of Python and R. It's all about making your learning journey easy. So that after six months, like if you will try to learn Python and R and machine learning, some go and so in same time, and you have spent six months, 
then after six months you will be either frustrated or you will your learning journey will be slow if you can divide it like this that i have to focus for first three months on uh, machine learning life cycle through a drag and drop tool and for the next three months i have to focus on on uh, learning only python because in the by learning the python the data science life cycle you have already learned so after six months you will be more confident you will be more ready for getting the job any other questions so far or should we move forward uh sir one question can i ask sir yes please 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 hello uh, hello yes 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 please yeah can you hear me actually there was a call i'm really sorry so this tool is a free tool or there is any subscription or uh, any uh, it's a free tool for it? it's okay free tool. it's an open source tool it's a community okay. driven tool so so there is no licensing involved however there is another variant of nine which is nine server which is more focused toward automation and scheduling that part is paid but this particular whole application is free okay and sir one more question that nodes that you showed to us there are some kinds of uh, data, uh, data sets that you use from excel right sir yes. sir right. is it possibility also to connect it with any server yes yes there are nodes if you go, go here there are nodes if you go to io sorry db node you can connect it into any database there are the db nodes postgres connector is there oracle connector is there SQL connector is there, vertical connector is there. You can connect it with any DB directly. With any DB, right, sir. And sir, this tool also help us to visualize the data. It's not the a thing. Like, when you talk about data science, then data science and data visualization are two separate domains. Two separate. Okay. Because there were some charts that you show it to us that there are some visualization as. That's well. a so basic. That's... Like like if if you talk about in comparison with Power BI with W then yeah. this is too weak in in the terms of uh, data visualization then then power bi w or micro strategy visualization is too advanced right this has some basic functionality of visualization but that's not like as powerful as power bi method right sir. okay right. thank you thank you sir. for example if, if coming back to a question here you can see here that there are different tools of use there are different like you can see here the different visualization available here. right right any other question so far or should we move forward no question sir can you uh, sorry uh, sorry again sir sir yes, actually please. we are from uh, non technical uh, uh, you know industry actually so uh, we do not have idea about that churn that is uh, one uh, a jargon used over there so could you please explain explain it that what okay. it is exactly okay okay churn is a is a very uh, like common problem of any business churn is a scenario where your when your customer leaves you to join another brand or another competitor right for example if if i i, I was previously using let's suppose uh, honda civic and now i have moved to let's suppose suzuki then i will be marked as a churn customer to honda civic and I will be marked as a new customer to Suzuki. Right, right, right. So let's like watch another video just to to to, to give you exposure towards tools. And the purpose of to this session is not like to deeping uh, to have a deep dive into data science and ML, rather than showing you and giving you confidence that now their tool exists which where you do not need to write a single line of code and uh, <coughs> so let's then see another complex model previously we were talking about uh, like different uh, things so let's like uh, watch another video by another tool from Google so that you can have an idea that uh, like at speaking with now, ML and today you're going to at least now in as of now uh, while uh, if you want to become a data scientist and you want to hunt a job of data science and you are from any background even you are MBBS doctor then still you can learn and do the data science 
Let's watch another video. I'm going to build a machine learning model right here, right now, and in under 10 minutes. I'm going to show you how to use a tool called Teachable Machines to train a model from your browser really fast. Let's get to it. So today I thought it would be fun to train a model that recognizes letters that I make with my body, like A, B, C. But for starters, I'm just going to train the model to recognize the letters Y, M, C, A. I'm going to use T-Tool Machines to do this. It's one of the coolest ML tools out there because it allows you to train a model that's for photos or for audio or pose without writing any code and it runs straight in your browser. All you need to get started is a computer with webcam. So first, go to teachoolmachine.withgoogle.com and click Get Started. From here, you can see there are three different types of models you can train, image, audio, and pose, but we'll make a pose project. Now, the idea with machine learning is to train a computer to find patterns in data. So step one is to collect training data. In the UI, you can collect training data right from your webcam. So I'm going to create a bunch of examples of me making the letter Y with my body. First, create a new class with whatever you want to detect, in this case, the letter Y. So as you can see, the UI is already detecting my pose and my facial expressions using a pre-trained model. But what I really wanted to do is recognize the letters that I'm making. So let's take some example pictures. You want to take pictures of yourself from lots of different angles and distances from the camera, which will prevent the model from overfitting on features about the room or the camera angles. Now I'll collect some data for M, C, and A. Once you're done collecting data, click Train Model. When you hit this button, TensorFlow.js actually trains a new neural network from data right in your browser, so do not close this window. Your computer is doing a lot of work under the hood. Click Advanced and Under the Hood to learn more about how it works. Once your model is done training, you can try it out right here in the browser. It works! The best thing about Teachable Machines is that it's really easy to export your model. You can either download it as a TensorFlow model file, or you can have Teachable Machines host it for you. And they even give you this nice shareable link. Plus, there's a nice JavaScript code sample that you can use to easily add the model to your web app. If you want to learn about all of my favorite easy-to-use machine learning tools, check out my blog below. That's it for now, and if you liked what you saw today, tell me what you want me to build in the comments. Until then, see you next time. Right. So, so there was another platform where you can build models, and even you, you can see it that, that, that in this example, it was a relatively complex model, where it was all about like predicting shapes based on your body posture, that, sorry, character based on your body posture. So, 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 so if you look at these things, so, so these things are now possible. If you are from any background, from any domain, you, you can do these things that you're on, right? So any questions so far or should we move forward? Hello. All good, sir. Okay. okay. So now let's move forward towards the, like, uh, another example in nine. Here in Nime, you can find a lot of examples which are pre-trained. <coughs> if I go there to analytics, then there is pretty modeling. Let's go for a credit scoring training. For example, if I'm working at a bank and I have to decide that which person or which application should get how much of uh, like loan, then this is there. I have clicked it here at the bottom. It's being downloaded here. You can see here. It's taking some time.
opening So, so, so there are examples uh, like in Nine where you can like open pre-built workflows. <coughs> so, if we move forward, then here is an other predictive model. Again, there is no code involved. If I go here, then there is a file table where different features are there and how many like how much loan we have to give them. Like, for example, uh, how much he's paying as utility bill, what is his age, number of less uh, installment he has made late in last 30 days, that ratio, monthly income, and number of open credit loans and blah, blah. So we have again applied a regression node. It's just like first removing outliers, then it's dividing your da data into two parts, then it's running smart, then it's applying algorithm, and then it will come to the final result. So it's running in the background, and you can see here now that this step has started to execute. Until the time it, it, it gets executed, let's like uh, take the final uh, discussion on board. When someone says that uh, uh, what is data science, then we talk about data size as com as, as like uh, a, an overlapping of three different fields. Data science is an, an overlapping field. Here, this part is called data science, right? So can I, any, anybody help me to identify these uh, overlapping circles? <laughs> Hello, but, sir, one, one circle is a science and math and the second circle is a, a software and IT background and the third one is business related. Sorry, my like third one is third one, we call business, it business, 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 business related. Right. Domain business, knowledge. Business. Domain knowledge, we call it as domain knowledge, right? So, so let's start, for example, if you are coming from any background, then maths and stats, if you are from IT background, if you are from non-IT background, you have to learn the basics of statistics or basics of maths, right? Secondly, domain knowledge is something which if you are, you are, you are from any background, you, you will always get domain knowledge when you will start doing a job, right? For example, an IT guy is not strong in the domain knowledge, but a non-IT guy is has an upper hand when it comes to uh, like domain knowledge. Then the software, when we talk about software, I've shown you that previously now the days are gone where people were talking about coding, that when it talks about coding, then you need a Python and R. Let's suppose coding to learn data science. But now there are other tools, like you can see here, log, you, you, you have seen nine here. So these tools, these, these data transformation tools, these, these number crunching tools, drag and tool, drag and drop tools are not there in market. Domain knowledge is something which always like no, no university, no, in, no institute will help you to, 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 to take a grip over the domain knowledge. For example, I, I've spent most of the time in, in telecom sector. So, so, so how telecom sector works, what is structure, what sort of problem they face, I will be, I will be best in it. If, if there is a doctor who is like eye specialist, of course, I cannot match his experience of being a eye specialist based on his, his experience. So, so, so this is how, which, which actually comes with the time. If you are working from in finance, then definitely you will be master of the finance. If you're working in less pose in, in sales, you will be master of the sales. So, so th this is something which we talk about about uh, you can say domain knowledge so, so so coming back to data science is an overlapping field where anyone from any background has equal uh, you can say that uh, equal chance of excel himself or herself as ml engineer or data science engineer 
but the only thing is that for example if you are coming from non it background you have to start your journey through drag and drop tool if you are coming from it background then they those people usually prefer to go through python but the difference is if you were coming from it background you will be already quite familiar with the software and and it will be easy for you to learn software but for an it guy it will be always be difficult to learn about domain knowledge but when we talk about vice versa some one person who is coming from non it background then he will always be stronger in domain knowledge as compared to it person but he has to learn uh, software softwares can be taught in 7 months in can be uh, sorry in a week in 10 week in 10 days in a month right but domain knowledge is something which can be only taught in the years so that's why now people are are are, are preferring to 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 transform existing domain experts within their organization towards data science through these drag and drop tools or a concept which is known as citizen data scientist through which they are transforming their existing employees into data science they are then hiring external candidates for implementation or for the operationalization of data science right so this was the last point this is i guess taking some time meanwhile i guess till the time it will take its out output generate its output if you people have any question you people can ask please hello no question Sir, what about the missing data? Ah, uh, missing data. Yes, missing. Oh, just missing. Okay. If I go to my previous workflow, which I've shown you, the mega workflow. Then there are different, like you can see here, different nodes available. Every node is doing its own work. Right? Here's a node of missing values. So in name, if you have to treat missing values, for example, if I show you here, then there will be a lot of question marks. There will be a lot of uh, like missing data values. For example, for this particular co columns, a lot of values are missing. So in name, I am just treating it through a single node, and there are different rules which I can apply. For example, if a number is missing, then replace it with the zero, and I can change different rules here. You can see here that different options of handling missing values is there, right? Hello. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I am hearing you. Okay. Okay. So. Let me show you another tool. Have you have people ever heard about H two O? Anyone heard about H two O? So let's watch. Oh, I have never. Heard. No, I have yes. never heard of H two O. Okay. So let's now watch another video. Again, a same thing. Welcome to H two Driverless AI. This is the login screen. Logging in will take. Like this is relatively a paid version. This H two O tool is, but just like we have, uh, I have shown you Lob. I have shown you Nime, Rapid Miner. Then we we talk about uh, train with machine learning on Google dot com. Then there is last tool which I have shown show you to give you confidence that learning machine learning like doing. Uh, our learning data science and machine learning is is less focused towards learning a tool to, to less focused towards learning a python and r coding language it's more of a job of learning complete data science life cycle me to a screen where i can add a data set from a number of sources we are continuously adding to the selection the first step is to import a data set we are going to be using the credit card data set from kaggle Once the data set is imported, we can do a number of things. I can intelligently split my data. Here, we'll specify the names of the two data sets we're going to be using: CC one and CC two. I can choose the percentage of the split that I want to use. I'm going to be using eighty and twenty percent split. You can now see that the data sets have been created. This is useful if you did not already have test and train split ahead of time. 
you can generate these on the fly in driverless AI without having to use other software like Python or Spark prior to ingesting it into driverless AI. Once I have my dataset, I can use the AutoViz tool to automatically visualize the dataset. It will generate interesting plots based on the dataset provided automatically. I can navigate through the various plots via the carousel. This particular plot is identifying outliers in each column, which I can highlight, select, and analyze. Other interesting plots include a correlation graph, heat maps, etc. The correlation graph shows correlations amongst variables, is interactive as all of our visualizations. In our credit card data set, we can see a high correlation between bill amount one and bill amount two. I can use the help button if at any point I do not understand what a visualization represents. I can download any plot for later use. Once I'm done visualizing a data set, I can create an experiment by simply clicking predict. We will need a train data set and optionally a test data set for our data. We'll be using a target of default payment next month, trying to determine if a customer is going to default on their payment on the following month based on their payment history. With the train data and target set, you will be presented with three knobs dictating how you prioritize accuracy, time, and interpretability. Changes to the dials will be reflected in the panel on the left-hand side. Fine-tuning of an experiment can be performed from the export settings. I can require certain algorithms or turn them off. I can set certain values, whether or not to build the Python scoring pipeline, whether or not to build the Java scoring pipeline after the model is completed, etc. We will start the experiment with the default settings. Now driverless AI is intelligent and recognizes that an ID column is present and automatically drops it. The upper left-hand corner describes the data set. This particular data set has 24,000 rows and 25 columns. The upper right-hand side are my settings relative to accuracy, compute time, and interpretability as previously defined. I am able to see real-time metrics of the model being created, different charts, ROC curve, precision versus recall, lift and gains chart, KS chart, and you'll also be able to see your actual resource consumption, CPU usage, memory usage, GPU usage, if the machine has GPUs as ours does. We can see that with each iteration of the experiment, new models are built and tested. We can see the variable importance of the model right here. When the experiment is done, you'll receive a screen that looks like this, where typically the final model is the best model. You can do a couple of different things. You have the option of scoring on another data set, transform a data set, download the predictions of both train and test data sets, download a scoring pipeline in Python, download a scoring pipeline in Java, or download the experiment summaries and logs. The experiment summary has something called the automatic documentation. It is an automatically generated document that will show you exactly what we did over the course of the experiment and why we did it. You can see the settings that we chose, the environment that it was running under, version of driverless, the data that was selected, so on and so forth. Most importantly, it shows the details of what we decided and what parameters were used for the model, which can be very useful, especially when you're trying to prove that this model is production ready, or maybe bring this to your executives as a part of the explanation for why this model is useful. For model deployment, you have two options, the Python scoring pipeline, which is significantly better for batch predictions, or the Java Mojo scoring pipeline, which is great for real-time scoring. You can also diagnose this model on a new data set. This is very helpful in lifecycle management. For example, as more data becomes available down the line, you can actually click on diagnose model on new data set and see how this model performs against the new data set. When I interpret this model, I'll get a screen that looks like this. It is a summary page with plain text explanations of what the MLI process did. You can also look at feature importance and Shapley explanations for the final model generated by driverless AI, or the surrogate models, which are proxies for the final models created by driverless AI. For example, K-Line, Decision Trees, and Random Forest feature importance, partial dependency plots, etc. You can also download any necessary resources from the Resources tab, including the Python client, so that you can interact with driverless AI with Python. We can also create automatic one-click deployments to compute platforms like AWS Lambda, EC2, local REST server, etc. Based on your experiments, you just have to provide the proper credentials. We entered driverless AI in a Kaggle contest. This was BNP Paribas 
claims management prediction Kaggle contest. In a more complicated model, we can see that I'm able to get Kaggle level results on a data set that was 114,000 rows and 133 columns. After running for a little over six hours, I was able to generate 17,000 new features and train 3,000 models. Had I entered this competition, I would have placed in the top 1%. Right. So, so this was another glimpse of another tool where you do not need uh, to, to write a single line of code that was just like click click. So, so, so the last cent from my side is when you people are learning, uh, we planning to, to enter into data science field, then Python and R is, is, is like tool is something which is least important. The most important as the bigger chunk goes to the London learning of the data science life cycle side, right? So that's it for my side for today's session. So if you people have uh, like uh, any question, feel free to float please. Any question? Okay. So guys, see you again, inshallah. Recording will be available on YouTube. And uh, like we, we do also offer, Dicentics also does offer a training online. Uh, an extensive training on NIME. If you have any queries, you can uh, leave a message on WhatsApp or on Facebook. Oh, sorry, Facebook, WhatsApp, or, or LinkedIn. Right? So, see you again, inshallah. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Uh, so, that's all about the webinar. Thank you so much, Mr. Ali. We had a great time on this webinar with you. To all yeah. the participants, you guys can email us for the recording or any queries regarding our training that info at the rate dietsanalytics.com.pk. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz. Thank you, sir. Allah Hafiz.